How did you first hear of Ronnie and Reggie Cray? Oh, that. How did you hear of that? What is it? Have you grown up knowing yeah. they was over that side of the water or what? Oh, we don't know about them yet. But from, although I lived, I lived in Ernie uh, at the time. Because their myth is bigger than they yeah, were. Yeah, it, 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 it was. It I spread, think. It spread everywhere. Yeah, but the yeah. myth was bigger than, yeah. than the but, thing. That's, yeah, what, I've, actually, that's what I've said. Yeah, yeah. it was, yeah. And uh, I didn't particularly want to meet them at all. But to what the only reason I can't, how I came to meet him was because I was at, at the old Bosch made a set of turns keys, yeah. and he could open every, any shop in, on a half day closing time, so, um, you know, of a day. Yeah. Uh, he, we had this set, and I had Buster Edwards and Tommy Wisby and Billy Hart, four of us, was out doing, doing these shops. Yeah. And I was like the foreman, uh, opening up everything and, and by name, by nature. And um, a direction it was a, a, a board, you know, a, a, a sort of notice board, board there, uh, right, checking it all out across the pavement because you did it blatantly, you know what I mean? And a couple of coming, two couples walking along with the, on the bike and the raincoats over the bike and sort of chatting away. Don't mind, carry on, just carry on. They just walk by and then we took blind bit of notice. <laughs> so, uh, I've got four lock-up garages in O'Neill. They're still there today, I think, lock-up garages. I think they are, anyway. And uh, it, that was full up with washing machines. I think, but this was when America was sending all the electrical goods over, and there were all these different electrical shops were opening up all over London. And there was people never seen a fucking vacuum cleaner or any or dishwasher or a, 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 a hot point fucking washing machine. And, yeah, yeah. Hoover washing machine and the big old Hoover cleaners and everything like that. But I used to have these lock ups full up with gear and a, a buyer come over and this guy was a was a face and another I can't remember his name now. But who was working for him? Charlie Cray. And he was he was working for this guy, Charlie was. And he was one of the best biggest buyers in London at the time, for everything. And he had the redders to spend to lay out. And of course, I took him round to the. And every time I took him round, Charlie, to the lock up, and I, I, I charged him a third of the price, you know, of what they cost, and that was all priced up. And he would take the, he'd take the lot, Charlie. He'd say, Oh, I'll have it all for it, you know, or what you got here. And of course, he was telling me about it's the twins, and, and that's, then he got friendly with. He brought Dolly with him, his wife, and she got friendly with Maureen, my wife, in had a house in Ernil, in, in Milton Road, Ernil, and um, by Brockwell Park oh. in the end, yeah. And uh, it, it's, a friendship began with Charlie and Dolly, and she used to come over and chat with Maureen and, you know, have a drink or a cup of tea or whatever, and, and uh, that we come pretty close, but he was always talking about the twins, so that's how I first got to know about them. And I'd, he, they'd like to meet you, Fred, you know, and all that. I said, yeah, well, I wasn't eager to go and meet them at all, you know, I didn't really. And uh, eventually I did, he'd invite me over there and I would do a couple of drinks and things up and parties and stuff. And I, I finished up going there and meeting them. But that was how my introduction to them was through Charlie Cray, yeah and he was buying all the gear off me.